Thank you for joining us for this water video. We wanted to kind of address this subject in a little bit of detail. It's a very common question on our blog and we get quite a few emails about it. So we wanted to, to put together a video to discuss the topic of getting started with water because a lot of folks who watch our videos and are on our blog are just looking into going off grid but they haven't got there yet and they're kind of making calculations. So we want to talk about this from the perspective of somebody getting started. That's what this video is designed for. This video is not for people who are water gurus or want to buy a done-for-you off-grid property or plan on hiring an expensive contractor to solve this problem for you. We know a lot of folks want to go off-grid, they don't have a ton of money, but they're, they're trying to answer the question like, well, what do you do? So we want to talk about what's working for us, some things that we considered, some things that we looked at but didn't work for us, and uh, ultimately kind of give you a getting started guide. So when you're first thinking about going off grid, you have this crazy exotic idea of what the whole thing is going to be like. You're going to have a mountain spring and you're going to have lots of timber and you're going to have all this room to garden and all this wonderful stuff. Well, there's reality that the number of properties available with a spring are very minimal and springs aren't always reliable. So you kind of have to start to think of other solutions for your water problem. So that's what we, one of the things we want to cover in this video is for, for those types of folks who want to buy maybe an affordable piece of property that doesn't just have everything. It's not the proverbial property for off-grid living. Throughout this video, we're actually probably going to refer to our blog because we're trying to make comprehensive information available on this subject. So we want to keep this video reasonably short. So oftentimes we're going to refer to the blog. We'll put links to the blog posts in the description below. So if you want more information on a particular part of this video, go ahead and head to the blog and you'll have your questions answered there. All right, the first thing we wanted to cover a little bit is what you think it's going to be like when you first go off the grid and you have to figure your water solution out. So we kind of car camped a bit before we, we actually got to this property and we're doing what we're doing now. So we kind of had an idea of how much water we would use, but not really. And so we kind of had to just make like speculative, you know, calculations. Well, I'll just say this in a nutshell, you'll probably use a lot less than you think but you're going to have to make some changes to your routines. For example, we used to shower every single day, sometimes twice a day, okay? Because it's unlimited water, right? So what's the point? What's the problem? Well, when you go off grid, you need to be more conservative. So at first, it might seem like you need hundreds or even thousands of gallons to, to feel like you have enough water. And that's not even close for us. Now, we don't have a three-kid three, three kid family. We don't have eight people living in our household. There's just two of us. So kind of use that to uh, factor into the equation. But on average, we have somewhere around uh, 48 gallons with us between water visits. 48 gallons. That's not very much. The way we got comfortable with that was we had actually like a one-gallon jug like this. And we had four of them that we took car camping with us. And we were able to go about two days on four gallons of water. Granted, that was very conservative. We weren't showering with that. We weren't doing a lot of the cooking that we do now. But it gives you an idea how little water you actually need to function. And I would say that we're not being super conservative right now, not near what we, what we could be. So to give you an idea, you might need somewhere around 100 gallons a week, something like that to be uh, very comfortable. So let's talk a little bit about some of the problems that you're going to have with water. First of all, water is heavy. And so transporting water gets to be pretty difficult, but odds are pretty good when you're first starting out, unless you happen to have a well already on your property or some other water source, you're gonna have to transport water somehow. So uh, one of the things that you need to factor in is weight. So for example, without getting into too much detail, we're gonna cover uh, how we transport water safely and how it's working for us and the exact size of water jugs that we're using. The next problem you're gonna have is freezing. Um, if you work at, or if you're living in a central uh, climate or maybe even a southern climate, you may not have this problem. Maybe you will, because sometimes they can even have some severe weather. But we're in the northern uh, climate and freezing is a, is a major issue for us. Uh, in fact, we've had temperatures at or below zero, which makes keeping anything that is water related thought out very difficult. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, how we keep our water uh, ready to use. Uh, the other thing that you're going to have a hard time with is keeping your water filled up. So however you decide to distribute your water, because it's heavy, 
you're gonna have a hard time making sure that it's easy to, to fill. In our case, we're living in an RV, which is the primary subject of this video. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about how we get our RV filled easily without breaking ourselves, hurting ourselves, or any of those other risks. So first we're gonna talk about what's working for us, and then we'll also touch on a little bit of the things that we tried, what we didn't try, um, and things like that too. So first let's talk about what's working for us. So it didn't exactly occur to us when we first started this that we could bring water to us. So at first we were taking our water down, or our trailer down to the water supply to fill that up. Well, long story short, we figured out we could bring water to us. In fact, we end up needing to because our RV is locked in for the winter. So what we found were these six gallon plastic uh, watering cans. They work really well because they're six gallons. That's a very important number because we found some seven gallon jugs. They're too heavy. That extra eight pounds just makes it really difficult to maneuver. Um, also, they have a pour spout in them, which makes it very easy to dispense the water. And they, of course, have a breather um, hole too, so you can dispense the water very quickly. So what we did was we purchased eight of them, and that gives us about 48 gallons of water on hand. And we're able to get water about every four to five days. So that gives you kind of an idea on consumption. We're using somewhere around 60 to 70 gallons a week. Um, we find that eight jugs is plenty because each time we go to town, we probably only get about five jugs worth of water, maybe six, something like that. So we always have a couple of jugs left over. So if we needed to go an extra couple of days, we could. So that's what's working really well for us right now. We get our water at the local um, uh, fairgrounds, which actually has a public water supply available and we pay 25 cents. And we hear that you can get like 400 gallons, but we don't really know. We've never had enough capacity to check it. Uh, but it's a very common place for people who are living off the grid in the area to get their water. It's very easy. We use a garden hose and we put it in there. When we fill these jugs, usually in about 10 minutes or less, we can take all of our water and we're ready to go. We transport them in the back of our car, which makes it very easy for us to do. We are already going to town anyway, so we toss them in the back of the Subaru and away we go. Um, for filling, we'll demonstrate that in just a second, but we actually have a gravity fed system that we use that fills the tank in our RV very easily. Basically, we hook it up to a hose and a funnel, we set it up on a shelf, and gravity takes the water and puts it in the tank for us. As we mentioned a second ago, one of the problems that you're going to fight is freezing because anytime you have something that's above ground in a freezing climate, you're going to have uh, freezing problems. So what we do is we're actually keeping our water jugs near the wood stove and uh, above about 30 degrees or 28 degrees, we don't have any problems, maybe even 25 degrees. We have zero problems with our water jugs freezing because we've got them indoors here. So even overnight, it's not a problem. When it gets below 25 degrees, that's when we start to have slush starting to build up in the water jugs. So when, when that's, it's that temperature, we start the wood stove anyway. And by keeping them here around the wood stove, they're easily thawed out and they're accessible. As far as the water in our RV goes, the way it's designed, we can uh, just open the cubbies where the plumbing is and we keep the RV warm and so we don't have any freeze up problems. So something that you'll want to consider there if you decide to purchase an RV to get started. So this is what's working really well for us right now. These particular jugs you can actually find online or you might be able to look at your local outdoor store. These are actually, were actually kind of challenging for us to find. We end up finding them in the outdoor section, not in an RV store, not in an RV section. Um, in fact, they're labeled, I think, kind of for camping. So kind of look in that section if you're in a department store. Um, I think you can get these on Amazon or some other digital retailer. So if we can find a link for you, we'll be sure to put that link in the video and uh, so you can find those online. All right, it is time to show you the Off-Grid Watering System 3000 patented and trademarked. Not really, it's not that exciting. So let's go take a look at how we get our water uh, filled. Okay, so we developed this very high-tech water delivery system after spending, I don't know how many hours holding a 48-pound water jug about right here. And you start to get back aches and stuff. And we tried mechanical things. We tried uh, high-tech, like a drill pump. None of it worked. We turned out to use gravity. It's very reliable. So I looked through some of our reclaimed materials, and I kind of found these little scrappy triangle things and this piece of wood and I thought well if we could just get the jug high enough gravity will do the rest so all we do is hook it up to this very simple funnel and hose 
and then place the water jug up here and it drains all on its own. We have to empty the last little bit out and we're good to go. The nice thing is we can just set a jug up there and come back sometime later and it's empty. No need to wait around. And so we usually put a jug or two in every single day. It takes us a couple seconds in the morning to come out here, toss a jug up there, come back a little later in the afternoon, replace it, and we're all done. So there's our glamorous and glorious water solution. Uh, I think what we really want to communicate with this video is that simple is good. Um, one of the things that we tried to do ourselves, we're guilty of that, is complicating things. We did have a grand idea about what we were going to be able to accomplish before winter, but it didn't materialize. So here we are, and guess what? We're doing just fine. So, does our water solution need some work? Sure, it's kind of a little Mickey Mouse, but at the end of the day, the water tank gets filled, we get to take showers and do our daily things, and everything is fine. So. Uh, there were many things that we considered as a part of this uh, process, so for some folks who think that we're overly simplifying the water problem, we did consider a lot of our alternatives, but guess what? At the end of the day, simple was better. If you'd like to read about some of the things that we considered but we didn't choose, you can go over to the blog. We've kind of lined out some of those things and why we they weren't a good fit for us. Doesn't mean they won't be a good fit for you, but you can at least kind of see why we made the decisions that we made and how we got to be here now. So we hope this video has helped you to see that water does not have to be some big gorilla in your life when you're considering to move to an off-grid property. Of course, it's a bit of a layered solution. For example, we live about 10 minutes from the, the nearest town. And so if you plan on living three hours in the mountains, completely detached from civilization, you got a little bit bigger problem on your hands. But it's, it's part of the bigger picture of getting started. Um, we looked at a lot of properties uh, when we considered this one, and there's no such thing as the perfect property. It doesn't exist. I mean, you want riverfront property, but you want to be in the mountains. You want to be rural, but you don't want to be too far from town. You want to have utilities nearby, but you don't want to hook into them. Like, There's a lot of things that you can sit for the rest of your life and try to write down the perfect property but at the end of the day, you kind of just got to get started if you really wanted to do that. And so that's what we want to communicate is, is how to do that. And, and don't worry so much about the littlest details. It's amazing how you'll kind of work through them once you're in the situation. The, the point here is get started and don't sit the rest of your life looking for perfection. It doesn't exist. Um, if you'd asked us a year ago, would we be living in an RV, carrying our water, driving to town, getting it for 25 cents, we probably would have chuckled, but we just said it's not too far-fetched. And here we are doing just fine. So thanks for joining us for this video. If you really enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel right here, like right here, right in here. Subscribe. Okay. And please follow us on our blog. Um, it's purelivingforlife.com. We do a lot of articles over there, kind of just documenting our journey, but sharing some of our, our successes and our failures. And also on Facebook and Instagram, where we do a lot of micro posting, stuff that doesn't make it to YouTube or the blog. If you like those things, please follow us over there. And we'll see you next time.